All right, good Sunday evening to you. It's time for our 6 o'clock Sunday evening Bible study. And tonight we're taking a dreadful twist. We're going to talk about cussing, cursing, taking God's name in vain. This is actually the first of a three-part series, so we will go into more depth next week and then finish it up two weeks from now. So, this is a biblical perspective of foul language. And it's an eye-opener. It's, it's one I wish I'd have worked a long time ago. I'll start with some definitions. Types of banal speech, I call them banal speech, as defined by Ashley Montagu in the book Anatomy of Swearing. So here's some of the definitions. We have swearing is the act of verbally expressing the feeling of aggressiveness that follows upon frustration in words possessing strong emotional associations. I would also like to add smacking your thumb with a hammer that brings some strong emotional um, associations. The next uh, definition is obscenity. Obscenity is a form of swearing that makes use of indecent words and phrases. Vulgarity is a form of swearing that makes use of crude words such as bloody, especially if you're the English. All right, these notes will be posted uh, as soon as we're done with this teaching here, so you can go through and capture these for your own. Cursing is often used as a synonym for swearing, is a form of swearing distinguished by the fact that it invokes or calls down upon or some evil upon its object. So profanity is often used as a synonym for swearing, and cursing is a form of swearing in which the name or attributes of the figures or objects of religion are uttered. That's profanity. Then blasphemy, blasphemy, which we'll get into next week, is often identified with cursing and profanity, is the act of vilifying or ridiculing, ridiculing the figures or objects of religious veneration. And I will expand it to say that you can also blaspheme individuals. So, swearing, obscenity, vulgarity, which generally I will call cussing, is vocalizing with crude, unedifying, and strong emotional words. These are my words. Often either sexual or excremental in tone. Think about it. Cussing is not a universal phenomena, though. Somebody uh, put in the, one of the comments about a culture that they knew that didn't curse and it's not naturally, it's not found uh, among indigenous American Indians. Cussing just isn't. It's not a, th a thing with the Japanese until they come back from America. Malayans and most Polynesians, they just don't cuss. They don't get this foul language thing going. Swearing is basically filthy speech. And if you want to hear sp filthy speech... Go hang out with some sailors. That's all I got to say. I've been around some sailors in situations where they are inventing new cuss words just to see who can invent the, the, the most inflammatory cuss word. Kind of funny, but it's kind of sad too. <clears throat> Go to the book of Acts, chapter 17. And in verse 5, but other Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters. Greek word honeros, P-O-N-E-R-O-S, honeros. And it literally means morally degenerate. So they rounded up some morally degenerates from the marketplace. They were hanging out, <clears throat> nothing to do trying to figure out what the, what the next interesting thing they were going to do, I guess. And they were loiterers. 
They were poneros. They were morally degenerate. From the marketplace, they formed a mob and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. <clears throat> so the operative word here is morally degenerate. They were proneros. In Luke chapter 6, verse 45, <clears throat> it says a good man, a good man. This is the antonym of poneros, an agathos in the Greek. A good man, a morally good man, brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil, a poneros, a morally degenerate man, brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For, and here it is, the smoking gun. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. The mouth, laleo in the Greek, it speaks, speaks without forethought and without, it's just, it just speaks without forethought, without thought or reference to what's being spoken. The mouth speaks and it's going to speak either morally good stuff or it's going to speak poneros morally degenerate stuff in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 we're going to move a little fast here but that's okay <clears throat> after this is done you'll have the advantage of stopping and starting it in Ephesians 4 29 it's talking to you it says let no corrupt communications you let no corrupt this is a Greek word Sapros, S-A-P-R-O-S, and it means rotten and corrupting. This is the one bad apple in the barrel of good apples, and what's going to happen? You let that bad apple stay there, it's going to rot the whole barrel. You let no corrupt, no sapros, no bad apple communication. The, the Greek word for communication is logos. In the beginning was the logos, and the word the Logos was with God. In the Word, the Logos was God. See? Let no corrupt Logos proceed out of your mouth. No corrupting, no bad apple proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying. That it, the Logos, your words may minister grace, great divine favor, to the hearers. Let no corrupt, no corrupting communications. I've worked for a research and development program years and years ago, decades ago, for a, a politician, and he made each one of us sign a uh, declaration, sign a uh, agreement, a covenant, actually. And he was a Catholic, devout Catholic, and that covenant said that when we were working on his projects, and some of them were military projects, when we were working on them, we could not cuss. And, and, and now you're shipped out with a bunch of sailors, but you can't cuss. You signed a covenant that you would not have tattoos. And interesting, because this was back in the um, 80s. They sure, sure won't pull that off today. But he didn't want corrupt words coming out of our mouth to taint him, to taint the project we were working on, to, to drag other people down. And I think it was actually a good thing. It didn't stop most of my team from cussing, but it did slow us down. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, another one of those, you do this. It says, let your conversation, you let your conversation, your logos again. Let your logos be always full of grace. Great divine favor. That's the difference between mercy and grace. Mercy is withholding a merit of judgment. Grace is great divine favor. God says, come to my throne. Come up here, son. Come up here, daughter. Come here, child. What do you want? What do you need? 
Let your logos, your words be always full of grace. Seasoned with salt, and this is a Hebrewism. Seasoned with salt means that it's fit for a sacrificial offering to God because God said that no sacrifice lack salt back in the Old Testament. But let your words always be full of grace seasoned with salt, fit for a sacrificial offering to God, so that you may know how to answer everyone. You season your words. You let them be full of grace. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these, anger, well, okay. Rage, eh, not so much a problem. Malice, hmm. Slander, oh boy. And filthy language, and this is the Greek word, shameful words. Shameful words from your lips. This is what you got to do. You got to rid yourself of this shameful language. Would you say that to your mom? Would you kiss your newborn child? With those lips on, with those words on your lips, that would be shameful. Would you say those in the ears of your three month old? That would be shameful. Your two year old, your wife, your husband, you just rid yourself of them. Don't let them come across your lips. Shameful words. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4. Nor should there be obscenity, and that's our word again, shameful talk. Nor should there be shameful talk, foolish talk, several different kinds of conversation. Foolish talk is literally it's raucous buffoonery. It's what you get when you're when you're all bellied up to the bar and you you let all your inhibitions down and you get rock raucous and you turn into a buffoon and Everybody else thinks it's funny, and you think they're funny. You shouldn't let this go on. No shameful talk, no raucous buffoonery, or coarse joking. The Greek word for this is twisted words. Double entendre, anybody? You know, where you say one thing, but you have a sexual connotation to it. In Ephesians 4, the Ephesians is the epitome of the Christian walk, the apex of the believer's walk. And here it says, no shameful talk, no raucous buffoonery, no twisted words which are out of place. And then it says, but rather, thanksgiving. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 16. Oh boy, here's some more. This is some more of this logos, this, this banal speech that comes out of our mouths. It says, avoid godless chatter. Heathenish banter is what it means. It's just low-life banter. When you don't have a big G God in your life, you're going to just let heathenish banter come out of your mouth. Just bring yourself up. Get sophisticated full of wisdom, God's wisdom. Avoid godless chatter. Avoid. Just walk away from it. Leave it. Excuse yourself. Hey, you know what? I, I got something better to do. And if you don't want to be rude, you can just say, I got, I got to be somewhere, so I'll see you later. You avoid it. Godless chatter. Because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. <clears throat> James chapter 3. In another session, we're going to get in depth more in this James record. James chapter 3, verse 6 through verse 8. The tongue, talking about uh, the physical tongue, but figuratively we're talking about what comes out of the mouth. The tongue is also a fire. It is a fire. A world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body 
in your tongue corrupts the whole body. Not what goes in, but what comes out, your tongue. Figuratively, your words, your logos, your speech, what you say when you're not thinking about what you're saying. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire. This is not a good thing. What comes out of the mouth, the tongue, the words. And next week, you're going to see how we're supposed to, um, we're going to look at the uh, commandment where it says, don't take the word, the name of the Lord your God in vain, the fourth commandment. And we're going to turn that around, turn it upside down. The tongue is a fire, sets so the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. Whoa. We want to be thinking about what we're talking about here. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restful evil full of deadly poison. Wow. Matthew chapter 15 in verses 10 and 11 Jesus said Jesus called to the crowd and said listen and understand pay attention clean out your ears get some q-tips going listen and under understand what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them to defile them is to make common and unclean to make sacrificially worthless Talking about sacrificing before God, right? What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, make common and unclean before God. But what comes out of the mouth, that is what defiles them. It makes your the sacrifice of your lips unworthy. We're supposed to be seasoned with salt in our words, a sacrifice unto God. But what comes out of your mouth? can defile you. It can make you sacrificially unclean. It can be words that God would go like, oh, I don't want to hear that. I can't believe you said that, child. Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 and 37. It says, but I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty, this every thoughtless word when you're just Laleo, when you're just gabbing, when you're just doing this raucous buffoonery, when you're just letting your mouth run, and it's thoughtless, and it tends towards this evilness that we're talking about, you'd have to answer in the day of judgment every thoughtless word that they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Thoughtless words. Give your words some thought. Give your language some thought. James chapter 1 verse 26. A lot of good stuff about your language, your logos in James and about the tongue. James 1 26. Those who consider themselves to be religious. I think I'm pretty religious. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves. Deceives themselves. You trick your own heart if you don't keep a rein on your tongue. And if you consider yourself religious, but you let your tongue fly, you let your words go unsalted, you let your words drag you down to where they can't be sacrificed to the Lord your God, they don't honor, edify, bless. They don't bring grace. Those who consider themselves religious yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. All your trips to church on Sunday, all your faithful tithing, all your looking good at the Gideon meeting, all of this stuff and then Monday morning comes and your your tongue just blah, 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 blah. you get to work everybody else is cussing so blah, 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 blah. 
you know, it just flows out. It just, you get in that groove and it's excremental in nature. It is sexual in nature. Think about it. Think about the words. Think about what comes out. It's either excremental or it's sexual. And it's unsalted. It's unworthy. And it makes your religion worthless. All that religious practice you, you're doing to say, yep, I uh, look pretty darn good for God doing it. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11 in the ESV says a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. Man, oh man, a word fitly spoken, sacrificed to God, thoughtful word, see, fitly spoken, placed at the right time. Who was it that said, uh, it's better to keep quiet and be thought of a fool than to open your mouth and dispel all doubt? A word fitly spoken. Wait for the right time. Bring up the right words. Put a little salt on them. Psalm 19, 14. May these words of my mouth. This is Psalm 19 is my favorite psalm. We were just reading this in a Bible study the other night. We are reading through psalms. And I got to read my favorite psalm because I said, ooh, ooh, that's my favorite psalm. So I read Psalm 19. In 19.14, may these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Of course, I memorized all of Psalm 19 in the King James Version. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalm 34, verses 13 through 14. Keep your tongue from evil. You keep. This is your job. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil. If, he's, if it's evil, turn from it. Go the other way. You get out your GPS and you look and you say, Wow, I'm fixing to walk, walk off the edge of the cliff like a tie yesterday morning. Right? And then you met to not, oh, you change your mind, you repent. The Greek word met not, oh, met noeo. You get a different look. You get your GPS, you look, and you see, you see, I'm fixing to walk off a cliff. So you turn and you go a different direction. You change your thinking, you repent. You turn, see? Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And I want to tell you some of these banal words, these cussing, cursing words. They don't seek peace. It doesn't bring peace. It might bring a jocular laugh, but it doesn't bring peace and pursue it, it says. Proverbs 4, 24. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Can it get any plainer than this? This is kind of confronting. Even me, my, my religious self, I'm confronted by some of the things that come out of my mouth, especially when I'm just, well, I, oh, just, well, I, I, I. it's not good. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupting talk far from your lips. If it's a bad apple, don't let it spoil all the good apples. Uh, one of the most embarrassing my times ever, years and years ago, cell phones. They come out and I had accidentally pocket dialed someone. And what they overheard was not edifying. I wasn't talking about them, but I, I said a few words that were banal. And I was pretty embarrassed. Think about who might accidentally be listening. Have you ever been muttering some bad thing and then you look and oops, there was sudden someone nearby you didn't notice before? Embarrassing. 
Keep your mouth free from perversity. You don't have to worry about that. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Don't even let it into your mind. Proverbs 29, 11. King James Version. Proverbs 29, 11. A fool utters. He just blabs all of his mind. But a wise man keeps it in till afterwards. He puts a little thought to it. He speaks a word, a fit word at the right time. Apples of gold and settings of silver, a fit word. But a fool, blah, 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 utters their mind. When you're just speaking, when you're not giving thought or reference to what's being spoken, what comes out of your mouth? Yeah, I'm dealing with one of the guys in my Bible study says, but I get to work. And they're all a bunch of cussers. And it's the cool thing to do. And I don't cuss. And they look down on me for it. And he struggles with it. And I'm like, well, bless your heart for not going down to their level. He says, but it's work. <laughs> and then they go home and kiss their wife with that mouth. Then they go home and kiss their grandchild with that mouth, the same mouth. This should not be so. Cursing is to speak words to inflict, to inflict defamation. Cursing, you're defaming someone. Harm or punishment, you're speaking words to inflict defamation, harm or punishment on someone. To invoke a spiritual damning and judgment. That's cursing. All false swearing and cursing is biblically profane. Profane is from a Latin word, uh, which literally means outside of the blessings of the temple. False swearing and cursing is outside of the blessings of the temple. You can't salt it and give it as a sacrifice to God. But cursing is to speak words to inflict defamation, harm, or punishment on someone. Don't do that. James chapter 3, verse 10 says, Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. The Greek word for this cursing is put-downs, defamations. They're no good. You're no good. You know, your mom is so fat. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursings. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Read book of James. Read the book of James. And then put that in your heart. Confront yourself on you. The words come out of your mouth. Back it up one verse to James 3, 9. With it we bless God the Father. And with it we curse. This is a Greek word. We loathe and doom. It's loathing and doom speaking men. With it we bless the God and Father. And with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. My brothers, this should not be so. 1 Peter 2, 23. Talking about Jesus, who when he was reviled, he was vilified, he was spoken evil of. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. You know, they speak bad about me, so... Well, I can, I can speak bad about them. All the concerned, lop-eared, flea-bitten, knock-kneed, lily-livered varmints. When he was reviled, he didn't revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him, to God, who judges righteously. So when they're bad-mouthing you, when they're reviling you, when they're cursing you, you say, God, did you hear that? God, help them. Help me help them, God. Help me speak a fit word right now. And that's what my, my guy needs when he's at work. He needs a fit word, the right word to speak. And I encourage them, well, get these guys aside. Get them separated from the crowd and talk to them and, and say, well, you know, you, your mouth's pretty filthy, but you're you're this this you're on the city council or you're you're part of your church or you're you're a leader in the boy scouts or you're 
you're a grandmother. How can you, how can these words be? And encourage them and love them through it. And if they revile you, well, they just do what they do sometimes. So I got five bullet points for you. First one is cussing, cursing, profanity usage in all forms is a barometer of social deterioration. Okay? It's speaking beneath you, beneath your level, beneath your social status. Figuratively, it doesn't matter where you are. Speak upwards. But this cursing, this cussing, this profanity, I see it now. U.S. Senators, Congressmen, even our President coming out with foul words, and it's beneath them. This is a barometer, a barometer of our social deterioration. We are speaking excrement. We are speaking sexual connotations. We are reaching below which is my second bullet point. The direction of profanity is progressively downward only. The direction of profanity is only, it's progressively downward only. It's a deterioration, it's a barometer of something sick and bad. These words are rotting us. Bad apples in a good apple barrel. My third bullet point, profane language, seeks to be poor, forceful. It seeks to get your attention to be forceful from powers below. When you think about it, excrement, sexual connotations is looking below. It's looking down. Which brings me to the fourth bullet point. Profane society invokes not God, but rather the illicit. The obscene and the perverted is looking down instead of looking up, instead of looking up to God. My fifth bullet point, ultimately profanity culminates in associated literary and artistic realism. It manifests in our artistic and our um, literary realism. You can't read a book now. You can't watch a TV show without hearing a GD, without hearing uh, an SOB, without hearing a... I hate to even say these words and make you think below, beneath this. It, a, a TV show has to have a sexual scene in it. It has to have double ent entendres. It has to take you lower. And then we all laugh with it. The laugh track helps us laugh and they cut from scene to scene every three seconds. It's boom, 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 boom. And your mind can't recover fast enough and you get sucked into it. This profanity is culminated in our literary and artistic Realism. Final uh, scripture for the night. Genesis chapter 6. And in verse 5. This is sad. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth. I almost want to cry thinking about this. And that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. And it probably started with just a little cussing, a little cussing and discussing, a little lower, think lower, go lower, lower, lower. We are better than that. Our God deserves better than that. Our lips should praise him. And next week we're going to talk about taking the name of the Lord our God in vain. Our quote of the week. I'm not quite done with you yet. I'll give you the quote of the week from Martin Luther. It says, whatever your heart, remember, 
What comes out of the heart? What comes out of the mouth? Whatever your heart clings to and confides in, that is really your God, your little G God. Wednesday night while I was sleeping, or actually Wednesday morning, early two in the morning, it's like God shook me up and gave me this word. And I had to, I had to write it down. It became a poem. I put it on Facebook earlier this week. And, and it's Persuade Me is the title of this poem. I'll read it to you and then I'm going to let you go. Persuade Me. Violence. Chaos. Vitriol. Murder. Debate. We see it all. March and burn with random hate. Internal rages feed, not sate. Assault me not with obscene word. I'm sorry. Assault me not with obscene verbs. Persuade me now with wholesome words. Can I hear an amen? Persuade me now with wholesome words. We could use a lot more of that in our society. We need to change our hearts from thinking evil continually. We saw the end of that in Genesis 6, 5. We saw where that got him. Change your hearts, people. Watch what comes out of your mouth. You let. You control. You're the ones. And you get, get there to work and they're all cussing. If you get stuck on the submarine and you've been out for a few weeks and people are oh my gosh they're inventing new words to cuss you can still be above that sign your contract with god sign your contract with god i will not be obscene i will not be i will not go low i will not be sexual i will not be excremental in my verbiage i will praise god my lips will speak holy words, fit words. All right? I'm excited for next week. See you next Sunday night. God bless.